communism has come to America. Welcome back to Strongman Personal Finance. We got to talk about unrealized capital gains taxes because the Democrats, the Democrats, the communists, they're trying to tax gains on stoinks when you haven't sold them. What a radical concept. So just to clarify what this all means, because some of you don't even know the difference between realized and unrealized gains. Let's say you buy a Stoink. Let's say you buy Tesla. Okay, you like my armpit here? You buy Tesla because it dipped and it vertical lines because that's what Tesla does. It just, it dips, it dips and then it just goes up. It's Tesla, bro. It's like a law of nature. Well, if Tesla goes up, you have a gain. But do you really? Well, some would argue you don't because you haven't sold it yet. You have not realized, made it into a real gain. Now, if you do sell it, you've realized the gain. It's a real gain. And you have to pay tax on it, okay? Assuming it's short-term capital gain, blah, blah, blah. Some, there, there actually are ways to not pay capital gains tax if you're a brokey, basically. But what the Democrats want to do but, uh, oh, Kamala. Kamala? 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 Is, uh, <laughs> Kamala, bada ding dong. <clears throat> she wants to tax unrealized gains on people that are worth over $100 million. And all of the right wing clowns are coming out of the woodworks and they're saying this is basically communism. Now, I'm very right, okay? I'm on the right with, uh, Mussolini, Adolf. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> But, you know, I, I vote, uh, I'm more of a conservative, uh, you know, fiscally and uh, definitely socially. I'm a pretty conservative guy. But I know that in the media, everything is fake, everything is propaganda, and everything is garbage. And as I've gotten older, and as I've read more about, and I've come to understand our tax law, I really do think... That the Republican Party does have the interests of basically the 1% as their primary motive. And that they're mostly bought and paid for. Now, of course, like there's corporate Democrats, you know. And this kind of measure where you attack unrealized capital gains is definitely pretty so it's it's pretty extreme when it comes to American politics. But if you really think about it, okay, first of all, what percentage of Americans would this affect? Almost none. There, there's very few Americans that are worth $100 million. And even if you were worth more than that, well, then you're going to conservatively, you know, you're, you're going to hire a bunch of accountants to, you know, mark down your fair market value of all your crap to be a, a lot lower than it is. There's ways around it to basically, you know, make the claim that you're not worth $100 million. So very few Americans will benefit from or will uh, be harmed by this. And what you're also not considering is that potentially people could use unrealized capital losses. That's right, because when you, when you sell a stock at a gain, you recognize a gain and you pay tax on it, usually. When you sell at a loss, that's a loss that can be used to offset other gains. So if they write the law where very rich people can take unrealized capital gains and unrealized capital losses... Well, that's going to benefit them as well, okay? So there's ways around it. But number one, it really doesn't affect, it affects very few people. I don't think there's going to be a collapse in the stock market because a couple like ultra rich clowns have to pay some capital gains taxes. I, I, re I really don't think that. <clears throat> I think the, the, the fear mongering and the, the screaming of communism is really just a bunch of <coughs> paid shills for large corporations. And it really is true that large corporations and very rich people garner most of the benefits. Most of the wealth in the United States, the, fat, the, the, most, the fastest appreciation, pre, appreciate, appreciating asset has been the stock market. Who owns the stock market? Rich people. Okay, yes, I have VT. You've got your QQQ because you're a genius. But the vast majority of the stock market is owned by the freaking rich people. OK, on top of that, we've had historically low corporate tax rates. Dividends are taxed at super low rates. 
capital gains or taxed at super low rates. Basically, the owners of the means of production, the, own, the owners of the capital, have gotten most of the benefits in the last decade and a half. It's just a fact, okay? Whereas the, the wages of the average person have stagnated. It's true. I mean, it, re- it really is true. Even me as like a, a capitalist, you can't deny that. And at a certain point, it starts to get ridiculous where stoinks just go up and up and up and the rich just get richer and richer and richer and richer. And, you know, the burden of taxation, I think it mostly falls on people that have, uh, <clears throat> like, you know, s- sort of rich people. S- mega rich people, they just live off dividends and capital gains. Sort of rich people, they make eight hundred, nine hundred thousand, a million dollars a year, but it's mostly from earned income, and they pay way more taxes, higher tax. That's where I, that's where I think most of the burden falls on personally. But uh, the ultra rich have benefited, and I think this policy would mostly hurt the ultra rich. You know, we have all these crises. You know, like it's it's very expensive to raise a child, and it really is, because I look at uh. Like, now I pay daycare for my children, right? <clears throat> so I pay $26,000 for daycare. Guess how much of a tax credit I get? $1,200. <laughs> okay, some rich douchebag can't pay a slightly higher tax rate or potentially pay, like, 1% on unrealized capital gains to, like, fund childcare for average working Americans. Because, you know, we're always worried about the birth rate, etc. But... We're going to get 12, I mean, because I have two kids. So I'm going to get $1,200 for freaking tax credits. And then the child tax credit is like two grand. It's just, it really is kind of ridiculous how, you know, the average person really doesn't see a lot of benefits from the government. Where very rich people have been the beneficiaries of an insane stock market. Insane stock market. Okay? So, do I think taxing unrealized gains is... You know, a great idea. Overall, I if they did tax them slightly, I don't think it'd be the end of the world. I really don't think that. I don't think it would collapse the stock market. I don't, I don't think everybody would die. I think the propaganda is mostly corporate interests. Oh, the owners of the companies that actually own the stock market, they don't want to pay any more tax than they have to. Nobody wants to pay any more tax than they have to. It isn't freaking communism, okay? I mean, you might as well, like... Any, you know, the, the, the government, it's like a huge part of our economy already. I mean, we're already on the way to communism, if you're going to call this communism. <clears throat> but I don't, I don't think it's going to fix our budget deficit. But I don't think it's the end of the world. I don't really care. It's not a big deal. If they tax unrealized capital gains, maybe they'll allow tax benefits for unrealized capital losses. Who freaking knows, Okay. But I personally don't think it's that big of a deal. I think the government should focus on helping families, not only because it's good for the nation, but it also benefits me as well. And at the end of the day, politics is also is all about, you know, uh, benefit, benefiting yourself. And I wouldn't pay taxes on my capital gains because I don't have $100 million like Jeremy Lefebvre. So, <laughs> so that's my thoughts. Let me know your comments below. Are you mad at me for not being a you know, ultra right wing, you know, billionaire shouldn't pay any tax at all kind of guy or, or what. (laughs) Talk to you later.